season still on, so let's address some earnings. Sunil Duggal, CEO of Dabur India, now joins us for a boardroom. Mr. Duggal, hi, good afternoon. Uh, your EBITDA performance mm -hmm. was quite good. Uh, your uh, margins went up significantly mm -hmm. and EBITDA jumped 15%. Uh, I'm assuming a lot of this would be because of raw material costs coming down. But is, is this number sustainable? Uh, yes, I think it's sustainable. It may not grow uh, at the same pace in the, in the, in the future quarters, but uh, at current levels, we are reasonably comfortable. The material environment is still benign, even though we'll be now lapping lower costs of last year from the third and particularly the fourth quarters. But overall, the margin picture looks good, and uh, this will be one of our best ever years in terms of margin performance. Okay, so the margin picture looks good. Mr. Dugal, good afternoon. Let's talk about the volumes now good because afternoon. the domestic uh, FMCG volumes grew 5% excluding beverages. Um, that's, you know, yes. that's still lower no, including, than... Including beverages. Okay, this is including beverages. Um, so can yes. you give us an expectation mm. of what you would expect in the second half of the year? Is this low single-digit growth something that you would expect to see mm. later in the latter half as well? Well, the basic reason for the lower volume delivery this quarter as compared to the previous quarters is the performance of our beverage business, which has shown almost flat, flat growth. <clears throat> and the chief reason for that is disruption of supplies from Nepal, which is our main sourcing hub because of the disturbances in Nepal. So we had a bad uh, September and a bad quarter. There's also some issues in terms of shifting of the festive season from October to November. Uh, so we had a high base of last year and a low base of this year consequent to that particular episode. Uh, but the non-food volume numbers look much better at around 7%, and uh, I think that's so, so therefore it's a mixed bag. Now going forward, uh, we are reasonably uh, uh, confident of delivering a decent set of volume growth numbers for the non-beverage business. Uh, there is an overhang uh, as far as our beverage business is concerned because of the Nepal situation. So for um, now close to a month, we haven't received any stocks from Nepal. We do not know when the situation will ease, so I think we are just uh, waiting and watching the situation there. If uh, Nepal were to resume dispatches uh, in the next few days, I think we'll, be reco we'll recover a lot of our lost ground. Otherwise, the damage uh, perhaps will be ir irretrievable. Okay, so uh, Mr. Dukkar, a, a word on uh, pricing. Uh, of course, you know, you yes. would have had more flexibility the last quarter because of what happened with raw material prices. Uh, if you could tell us, uh, mm -hmm. you know, in terms of your revenue growth, if you could break up in terms of uh, volume and pricing, and uh, did you actually see uh, a bit of a pricing cut in last quarter? No, we didn't do any pricing cuts. In fact, our vol uh, pricing uh, was around close to 4%. So we had 5% volume and uh, around 4.5% uh, of price. So the price movement uh, continues. Obviously, the price increases are going to be pretty moderate. And uh, a lot depends upon the demand situation. If the demand picks up, I don't think we'll have to resort to price cuts. If the demand situation re remains very sluggish, then there may be some discounting happening to, to uh, run the top line. So um, it's a wait and watch situation. At the moment, we haven't uh, yet resorted to price cuts uh, like many other companies. And we hope we don't have to resort to them, but uh, we'll, we'll uh, take it one day at a time. Okay, Mr. Dukal, just hold that thought. Uh, the, the market is coming off uh, quite a bit now. 8150 is also gone now. So we are now at 81.50 and uh, uh, let's pull out the intraday chart of Indusind Bank. This clearly is a banking problem. The bank nifty is now below the 50-day moving average and that's where the incremental selling has come. And look at that intraday chart of Indusind Bank and that's largely responsible for taking the bank nifty below 50-day moving average and for the uh, and the nifty below 81.50 because you haven't uh, seen incremental weakness in other stocks. Yes, bank. Keep in mind, it also uh, delivers numbers and it's the highest of high beta as far as the uh, uh, banking stocks are concerned. Let's pull out the intraday chart of Yes Bank because that would tell you the story now trading at low point of the day. So not looking good uh, for the bank Nifty and not looking good for the Nifty. Sonia. Oh yes, uh, definitely. In fact, even in the broader markets, now some of the stocks are starting to come off some more. Uh, Bharat Forge is now down more than 5% uh, ahead of its uh, numbers tomorrow. Uh, remember, Amara Raja's numbers were quite weak this time around, so that stock too is well in the red. So lots of casualties in the broader markets as well. But Mr. Dugal, uh, just coming back to your own performance, uh, now for the first half of the year, you're sitting on a base of about 4,200 crores as far as revenues are concerned, overall that is. Can you give us a sense of how much it could grow, the top line, in the second half of the year? Well, typically the build-up of revenues is around 55% in the second half, 45 in the first. So if you follow the same trajectory, you can extrapolate uh, what we'll deliver. But I think a lot depends upon the demand situation in India, which uh, remains at the moment fairly subdued. Uh, we do hope for a revival, but uh, so far nothing much seems to be happening. 
rural demand particularly is impacted. So we'll have to wait and watch. I think international business should deliver a better set of numbers in the second half as compared to the first. So that'll be one positive, but a lot depends, like I said, on uh, India demand. Okay, a cursory look at your numbers tells us that uh, mm -hmm. ad spends ate up a bit in terms of your margin. It could have been a lot better if uh, not for higher ad spends. Uh, uh, why are you taking the strategy of higher ad spends and is that a strategy that you're going to follow in future as well? Well, we, we continue to invest in our brands, so I don't think uh, we take a short-term approach of advertising. There are certain numbers which we uh, start in the beginning of the year in terms of how much are we going to invest. And we typically don't change that very, very rapidly unless there is a huge change in the dynamics uh, of, of, of the business. Uh, perhaps we'll do some fine-tuning in the, in, in the quarters ahead, maybe reduce a little bit of spends in beverages where supply issues are there. But overall, I think the ad pro trajectory is going to be maintained at uh, a pretty high level. I don't see any any, any short uh, 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 cut in our uh, total spends uh, in any meaningful way. I don't think that will happen. Okay, just one quick question before we let you go. Your oral care business has done quite well this time around. It's a 19% growth led by Miswak and Dabur Red. Mm -hmm. uh, is this uh, a growth that could be sustainable in the latter half of the year? Well, toothpaste grew by around 29, 28, 29 percent, and obviously this is not a sustainable rate. You can't grow at this pace forever. We've been doing it for the last few quarters, mm -hmm. and uh, we'll enjoy the ride as long as it continues. Uh, so we are in a good space here, but uh, I think it's prudent to assume that uh, over a longer period of time, the growths will taper off on very high base. Mm -hmm. But at the moment, we are uh, doing extremely well in these two brands. All right, Mr. Dugal, thanks a lot for your time today. That's uh, Dabur, a stock which is doing reasonably okay in a weak market but the market itself now clearly some stop loss is getting triggered the sensex is now 300 point lower the bank